<coughs> now it's a pleasure for me to introduce to you uh, Mr. Michael Glenn from uh, Touchstone Interpretation. Uh, Michael, you have been working for many years with interpretation and uh, you also connect very closely nature and culture. And that's a theme for the conference. So please, I'm looking forward to listen to you and so we all do. Please, Michael. Thank so much for that you have been for att tala här i dag och jag beklagar att jag inte kan tala svenska. <laughs> and if you didn't understand it, <laughs> it's up there. I want to, in a sense, extend in a way some of the tentacles of the European Landscape Convention and talk about communicating the story of natural and cultural heritage in Europe. And I want to establish a new concept. You're the first people to have seen this. It's what I call the double helix of our inheritance. And in a way, I think it pulls together things that we've heard from Sven and Leif in a much less intellectual and much less philosophical way. I'm sorry, I'm terribly practical and boring. And as a little bit of background, I'm both a, uh, a consultant in my own right with two businesses, one consulting and planning, one writing. Um, I'm also very long involvement within the profession of interpretation through our association in Great Britain, the Association of Heritage Interpretation, which I helped to found in 1975. I'm a member of, our, of the American Association, and a couple of years ago I was deeply honored to be elected as chair of our new European organization, Interpret Europe. So enough of that introduction, and one thing I will say from a conversation with Sven last night, he said, state the obvious, because it may not be obvious to anyone. So you're going to get a lot of obvious things building on what he and, 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 and Leif and indeed uh, others have, have said. So our heritage genome is very much what we've heard about, is an approach that tries always to connect not natural and cultural heritage, because they are always and totally in, uh, linked together through all the forces that we know about land, water, climate, flora and fauna, anthropology and science. One cannot exist without the other, and the interpretation that does not recognize this is, is to a degree sterile. And so what I wanted to do was just to rehearse yet again some of these things called definitions that we all get so hung up about. And what I've done is to try and pull together some together. You've had already one or two from Sven. Tilden, Freeman Tilden, who is the progenitor of interpretation in a formalized sense in 1957, called it an educational activity. But educational in the sense of broad learning, not teaching, and that's a mistake that people make. It's to do with a much broader approach to learning. And his ideas of revelation and rev relationships is absolutely essential to this. Revelation, importantly. But it's also, and Tilden again would say, and I've slightly adapted it, which is why I've taken a bit of credit for this, it's a communication activity which, in his words, aims to provoke interest. This word provocation, getting people to think, is desperately important. And I feel, and I use this in my teaching, that it widens people's horizons, that it, uh, it gets them to, to think broadly as well as, as, well as deeply. And um, compare my definitions with those you've heard from Sven, who in a sense introduced two very important elements. Um, or one important element, if you like, the emotional of interpretation having a heart as well as a head. Most of my stuff is, 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 is largely to do with, with, with the head for a number of reasons. But interpretation, as your conference title suggests, is also a participative activity. If people don't play a part in learning and finding out and discovering um, and appreciating for themselves, um, they will not forge what the Americans are very keen on, these emotional 
um, connections, and I would add intellectual connections. I think there is nothing wrong in helping people to think more deeply and more widely. It's not just experiencing, it's not simply emotional relationships. Making intellectual connections is important. And in Interpret Europe, we would say that interpretation is an inclusive activity in the sense that it aims to develop and share a sense of ownership. Uh, so between Interpret Europe and myself, we have a fourth definition. Now, since I put this presentation together, as inevitably happens, I've thought a little bit further. And I think, and certainly my mentor, Don Aldridge in Scotland, who taught me and may turned me into an interpreter 45 years ago, 44, sorry. Um, a fifth definition is that interpretation is a persuasive activity in the sense and my friend Torsten Ludwig in Germany, who th writes very thoughtfully on these things, would say it persuades people to think, perhaps initially we called it conservation, now sustainable development. So I don't have a slide, but I will the next time I do this presentation. Fifth one, and I like five things, <laughs> it's a persuasive activity. Not everyone would agree, but I think we could say that. I then, having looked at interpretation, went to look and see what this word heritage means. And I'm going to ask Kaisha if you can tell me how long I've been going for so far. I'll show you when there is three because minutes Because I didn't, see, didn't check when I started. No, it's okay. I looked, as we all do at dictionaries, Chambers Dictionary was started in Scotland, as it happens, about <laughs> 250 years ago. And I happen also to agree with what they say, that heritage is anything, 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 I keep repeating that, transmitted from our ancestors or from past ages, anything, and they say especially historical buildings and the natural environment. I would have said natural environment first and historical buildings, but never mind, let's not argue about that. Um, what I mean by heritage is similar, is that it is all, i.e. the anything that I said, it is all that we interpret from the, inherit from the past. Tangible and very, very important, intangible. We must not forget all the intangible things, the memories, the songs, the arts, the music. And I know this is something that chimes with Dirk Gottsman. Is he here in the room somewhere, Dirk, of Civilscape in, in Germany? where little places with their intangible heritage are as important as the great buildings of architectural merit or the huge landscapes of great beauty and international importance. And what also is important is it's not anything and all that we inherit, but we hold it in trust for the future. I think, Sven, you said words to this effect. I'm sure Leif did as well. I'm sorry, I was getting a running translation, but I couldn't get, couldn't get it all. Um, in fact, Kaisa you, Kaisa, you also said something about if we don't understand our surroundings, we can't play a full part in looking after them. Mm -hmm. So, hold in trust for the future is essential. And I have a golden rule. I'm not speaking on behalf of Interpret Europe, I'm speaking on behalf of me at the moment, although our leader in Interpret Europe has seen this and hasn't disagreed with it, which is a major achievement, I have to say, because we spend a lot of time teasing out these issues. Heritage interpretation must set places and things, events and ideas, in context. And again, I think, Sven, you said something to this, if, this effect. Unless we know the context in which things are happening, we can't understand them. They become factual, they become knowledge, not understanding. And I listened to a talk the other day, and I'm digressing again. I know uh, that somebody who kept saying, people come to the British Museum to learn things. And I said, stuff that. They should come to understand things. Learning is all fine. You can do that. You can read a book and learn. But it's the understanding. And some of the things that Roger Greenaway was talking about in his course earlier on was to do with people working together to understand things rather than simply learning. So if I digress, it is to a point. Context is essential so that heritage interpretation has impact and credibility. And going back to my genome, uh, my, my, uh, my DNA of heritage, it's not any one thing. You can read this. It's this interplay. And Sven, you mentioned our fire, air and water, the four elements, the animals and plants that we share this planet with, and of course our fellow human beings. And so therefore... 
And I devised this as a little logo for interpret Europe. These colors are roughly speaking the for 10 colors that appear in all the European flags with a little bit of cheating slightly. And I hope you note I'm wearing my Swedish, yes. my Swedish flag tie, which is purely coincidental I happen to have this one. I'm told that the flag police are going to arrest me for using the, Spanish, the Swedish flag at the beginning, but never mind. These elements of heritage are a series of flags and they very nicely work down to leaving people at the end. Everything there is at the beginning and it is we who have the responsibility of, of looking after these elements of heritage. And I want to use three examples in Sweden of bringing this nature and culture together. Um, you could, the cynic could say they're the only three examples I've visited, so, uh, uh, but there, there, is, there is more than that to the point. Turista, wonderful national park, but its value lies not simply in its being a virgin forest and a wonderful piece of geology and lots of other natural things, but also its value lies in its very long use by people of the land and the water. And it's that story which is as important as the natural history story, but it couldn't have happened without the natural history, and tourists would not be important without the story of the people, and of course the people who now live round about it and treat it as their own. One story is not complete if not told in the context of the other. And I rather I love this picture of the farm in the natural landscape, which is from the visitor centre at Turista. This integration of human life and activity and and the natural surroundings. A second example is Skansen, which is as you know is internationally uh, renowned, but it's not just a unique and historical collection of buildings and activity. It also cares for wild and domestic animals that the people have lived beside and exploited. More I have to say to the advantage of human beings than to the advantage of the animals, but never mind, I like roast beef as well. Um, <laughs> And one story at Skansen is not complete without the other. And we've had long discussions with them um, in, in August because I think they would have made themselves don't always see these connections. Now, the people who look after buildings and the people who look after animals, and we may have helped them to talk together. The third example is in itself a remarkable example of not only of a formidable museum and a formidable piece of rep rep restoration, but of human endeavor, craftsmanship, and one might describe as overweening ambition. But you can't tell its story unless you explain what it was built for and where it was traded and the natural environment and the lands and the seas that, uh, that ships visited. And there's a ship nearly visiting me where the arrow, the arrow points to where I, where I live at the moment. But the other thing you have to understand is a basic physical fact, the principle of moments. If you put too much at the top and it's too heavy, it tips over, and 300, 400 years later, you dig it up and present it to, to the public. So that integration of natural and cultural, in a slightly different sense, is essential. And these three places do it extremely well. Um, that's the um, interactive that you can play with for hours if you want to in, in, at, the, at the Vasa exhibition. So I come back again to the uh, heritage of Europe now, if you like, in a slightly different format, as a series of flags. And w these elements all come together, and others have re referred to them as well. I'm going to change tack now and talk a little bit about Interpret Europe, because I think we want to get these flags all flying in the same way. And we formed Interpret Europe as an independent organization to try and bring together people from across Europe, many of whom had no association to turn to. They didn't know where to go for help, who were professionally involved in interpretation. And so our membership includes a wide range of people who either use interpretation in their jobs, employ other people to do it, teach it, research it, um, or indeed support the principle of it. We're a small organization, we have a small membership, but we are growing and we are slowly working our way into um, the corridors of power. And we have a mission, doesn't everybody have a mission? Interpretation. Eva point, whispered in my ear at one point, has a mission. Um, and we have a, a, a mission which you, you can see there, I don't need to read it, read it out to you. 
we also have a vision that at some stage, ideally in 20, 18 years, heritage interpretation will be the thing that everyone accepts, helps people to understand and appreciate the importance of their natural and cultural heritage uh, integrated um, across Europe. And that we will therefore represent the profession in these important places where people make decisions and even more importantly, hand out money. It's taking time to get started, but we're working on it. We keep meeting people who can help us in this direction. So our history and record is quite short, and it began at a conference 13 years ago, was developed through an informal network, largely in Germany, meetings in Scotland, and through a group supported by our American friends in Athens, and Ava was one of the people who was there at that meeting. And it led, and quite quickly, we, to what you can see there. And the exciting thing is that after three years, we will be back in Sweden. I never visited Sweden until a year ago. Now I can't keep away. <laughs> it's one of the joys of getting older, as I, I was saying this to Sven and Eva last night, of learning about a new country and a new culture. And I love it. And San Francisco, eat your heart out. Dublin, eat your palace, mm, come on. Stockholm, that's it. That's where I want to be. <laughs> Gunnel, Gunnel's Krog for me in Lila Nygarten. How am I doing for time? Three minutes. Okay, I'm all right. I'm good. I'm ahead of myself. So, what we want to do next year is, and Sven kindly introduced it earlier, is to take the inspiration of next year as European Year of Citizens, whatever that may mean, Eurospeak is wonderful. It's written in what is called English, but we sometimes need dictionaries to understand what Eurospeak means in English. But essentially, we want to widen the scope and consider, or they want to widen the scope and consider citizenship at all levels, from the very much the local community, the things that matter to local people, to what the world considers as important. So it will take in everything from a local civic or civil society um, organization to, if you like, World Heritage or UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And next year we want to explore the ways in which this business of interpretation can help to people to share sense of belonging to heritage in general. Um, to take on, an, 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 if you like, a, an emotional ownership, not a literal ownership, and, and to, to a sense to share also the responsibility for looking after it and understanding the importance of everyone's heritage as a shared heritage. Um, and we hope that this way, and it will depend on the papers at the conference, that we can look to ways in which heritage interpretation can reinforce these values of um, civic pride, if you like, and get people to, at local level, and well as visitors, to, to engage in it. This is back to this word of participation, which you use in your title, and which I mentioned earlier. Um, two questions. Can, can we interpretation help people to broaden their awareness, not just of their own communities, and many people, I asked three people yesterday where the National Museum was when I came out of Tunnelbana somewhere or other, and unfortunately, I followed the sign to Galleria, which meant I was lost in shops. So three people, the first three people, had no idea where the National Museum was, which is quite interesting. Um, uh, and somebody finally did. I wasn't very far away from it, but I knew that, but they didn't. Um, <laughs> so local people need to learn, but also uh, um, awareness of, of the importance of other people's heritage. And even more importantly, can we, and this is back to not it's like a world citizenship, uh, and why this conference is being run in association with the American Association, as well as our friends here in Stockholm. Um, can we foster understanding of different and even conflicting heritage and cultures? And we had an interesting moment at our conference in uh, Ljubljana, which apparently an American who couldn't pronounce it called El Jablijana. So to a lot of us, it's El Jablijana in Ljubljana, where a um, Bulgarian delegate gave a talk about our heritage is very important, and the uh, and I've forgotten where she was from next door, the former Yugoslav Macedonian girl got up and said, "But that's our heritage, and you not do that." No, 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 that's our. So 
we hope to bring together these problems of shared or even conflicting heritage. So we hope next year to share that heritage and that interpretation can make us citizens of the world and interpret Europe's fun. Come and join us in Sigtuna. Thank you. Tak. Tak so much. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, we are looking forward to next year in Sigtuna. Uh, you mentioned provocations uh, rather early in your speech, and I think that sometimes we are too polite. You were very polite to start with, but maybe sometimes we have to be more tough. Uh, I don't know um, if you like volcanoes, uh -huh. but maybe that could be some inspiration for next year in Sigtuna. Thank you very much. Thank, so much. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Yes, it will be. I I shall burst it, burst into flame. <laughs> and this one too. Okay, oh, thank, thank you very, you very much. much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.